Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back to another recipe test. Today I'm going to be using an ingredient that I never knew about until very recently, and it's mesquite beans. And I learned about it from lovely viewer Shelly. Shelly, thank you so much for getting in touch with me and for sending me these. And this is a bag of mesquite beans. Shelly lives in Nevada and she picked these and sent them to me. So thank you so much, Shelly, for sending these to me. And these are honey mesquite beans. I wish you could smell them. They smell like biscuits and cinnamon, but they're beans, look. And listen, aren't they great? Now, when I first opened this package, I thought Shelly had toasted these or fried these or done something to them, but she hadn't. She just picked them when they were dry. Now, mesquite trees grow in the Southwest, and I always had heard about them for their wood. Mesquite smoked something or other, but never heard of these beans. So as you can tell by these pods, these are beans, and they are in the Fabaceae family, and there are three varieties of mesquite. There are honey mesquite, scrooby mesquite, and velvet mesquite, and these are the honey variety. So native peoples used to grind these beans and make them into a meal and make them into cakes. Apparently this is gluten-free, so if you can't have gluten, this could be a good alternative. They are naturally sweet, and today I'm going to be using them to make mesquite bean jelly. Again, I've never heard of these beans before or this jelly before until Shelly got in touch with me. She actually sent me some of her homemade mesquite bean jelly and a link to a recipe so I could try it myself. So Shelly picked a bunch of beans for me, enough to make a recipe, and I went ahead and made my own mesquite bean jelly and let me walk you through the steps of what I did. So the recipe I'm gonna be using comes from Edible Austin and I will put the link down in the description. And the first thing you're gonna need is a bunch of dried mesquite beans. You wanna pick these off the tree, you wanna avoid picking the ones off the ground because they can get buggy. So next we're gonna make a mesquite bean juice to flavor our jelly. Now none of the recipes I found said a specific amount of beans, so I used an entire quart bag. So I took my mesquite beans and I broke them up into small pieces into a large container until I had 10 cups. And I added six cups of cold water, and then I brought this up to a boil and let it boil at a rolling boil for five minutes. And then I turned off the heat and I let it steep for 30 minutes. While the beans are soaking, we can go ahead and prepare our jars for canning. And I first learned about canning back when I lived in Montana and we picked huckleberries and raspberries and I canned my first jam. It is quite, the effort, so if you're gonna undertake it, it's great to have friends, it's great to do a good large amount because of the work that you're doing, you might as well do a good batch. And back then I got this book, it's called Putting Food By, and it's written by Ruth Hertzberg and Beatrice Vaughn and Janet Green, and this is a great reference. It's pretty old, but these techniques don't go bad, <laughs> and it talks about how to can food, how to drive food, just how you put up food when it comes in so you can have it later in the year. Anyways, you're gonna prepare your jars, you're gonna sterilize them, place your jars in some hot water, bring them up to a boil, and you wanna boil them for at least 10 minutes to sterilize them. You also wanna sterilize your lids, you wanna make sure you're using new lids, and your rings. After the jar has been boiling for at least 10 minutes, you're gonna use some tongs, take them out and allow them to dry on a clean cloth. So we're gonna leave the rings and the lids, make sure they're new lids in the hot water. We want them to make a nice tight seal and that sealant stuff to be nice and sticky and gummy. We're gonna use a lot of water for the canning process, so this would be a good time to start getting it warmed up. Here's a little trick that I learned from the kitchen. I'll put the link down below. You can take some rubber bands and put them around the tips of your tongs and that will give you a little bit more grip when you're grabbing the really hot, slippery glass jars. This actually worked pretty well for me. I used to have all of this canning equipment, but when I moved, I got rid of it. And then you're just like, why did I do that? But this is the first time I've canned in many years, so that's why I got rid of it. Anyways, I digress. Let's get back to the jelly. So after we let our beans steep, we're going to strain all the beans out and you should at this point have around four cups of juice. So in a pot, we're going to measure three cups of our bean juice and then we're going to add our pectin to that. And I'm using sure gel pectin and stir that around to help it dissolve. Turn on the heat and we're going to bring this up to a boil. So once that comes up to a full boil, we're going to add a quarter cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice and four and a half cups of sugar. 
Stir that all around and we want to bring this to a full boil. And once it's up at a full boil, we're going to allow it to boil for one minute. So you'll see some foam beginning to develop on the top of the syrup. And to reduce that, you can add a little bit of butter. So I added about a half teaspoon of butter to that and stirred that in and the foam should settle down. And then you can also skim the foam off as well. So while this is hot, we're gonna place it into our sterilized jars. And I just used a big ladle here, carefully spoon that and leave a quarter inch of headspace at the top of the jar. Now you're gonna take a clean, dampened washcloth and wipe off the rim of the glass. Place your hot lid on top and then secure that with a ring. We should get five jars of mesquite jelly. So now we're gonna water process our jelly and this vacuum seals the jars and allows us to keep these in the pantry for a year or so. So we're gonna bring a large pot of water to a boil and you also wanna elevate the jars off the bottom of the pot. So typically you would use some kind of canning rack that would fit inside your pot. So I didn't have one and I read about this hack where you can use some aluminum foil and make yourself a makeshift rack to put at the bottom of your pot. So initially I thought this foil idea was a great one. It didn't work well for me at all. Everything was unbalanced, it wasn't even. Maybe if I made my grid pattern a little bit different, it would have been more stable. I don't recommend it. If you can find yourself a rack, try using a rack because this foil thing was actually kind of dangerous. So I don't recommend that hack at all because the jars wanted to tip over and it just wasn't, it just didn't work. So that was not a successful hack. When your water starts to get hot, you're going to take your jars and place them onto the rack in the hot water. Add boiling water to it if need be. You want at least one inch of water on top of the cans. So there's enough pressure to seal them. So once it comes up to a boil, you're gonna reduce the heat so it's kind of at a gentle simmer, and you're going to start your timer then. And we're gonna water process these for 10 minutes. So starting your timer, set it for 10 minutes and allow this to boil. It's important when you're canning to follow the directions. Don't cheat, don't do it for eight minutes, don't do it for nine minutes, do it for at least 10 minutes like it says. Because we don't wanna mess with canning because we don't want botulism, right? Okay, so after 10 minutes, we turn off the heat, then pull your jars out using your tongs with rubber bands and place them on a towel lined tray and allow them to cool. Now this is my favorite part of canning. As the jars cool, they'll begin to seal and you'll hear this great kind of sucking pop. And what's happening is that you're getting a vacuum seal on the top of your canning jars. If this wasn't sealed, it would pop, it would go But this is sealed and so it is ready for my pantry shelf. So we're gonna allow that to cool undisturbed for at least 12 hours and then your jelly will set and your cans should be sealed or jars should be sealed. All right, so that's that. That's how you make mesquite bean jelly. Now let's go ahead and give us a taste. I'm gonna go put some toast in the toaster because that's how I'm gonna have it. Oh, I love toast with butter. So here is my finished mesquite bean jelly. It is beautiful and it looks very similar to honey. In fact, if we compare it to my fall harvest honey or late summer harvest honey, it's almost identical in color. Did you know that I'm a beekeeper? If you didn't know that, well, surprise, I'm a beekeeper. And if you haven't seen my other channel where I show you all my beekeeping adventures, I'll put again, the link down below. Beekeeping, I've been doing this for three seasons now. It's been incredible learning experience. So this is from my late summer harvest. If we compare it to earlier in the summer, it's pretty amazing the difference in color, right? This is a lot lighter, this is a lot darker. Depending on what they're foraging during the time of year, you're gonna have different colors of honey and of course different flavors. So I'm gonna compare it to the later harvest because the color is much more similar. And of course, I'm gonna compare Shelly's. Now if we look at Shelly's, hers is much darker than mine. And I think it's because she probably used more honey mesquite beans than I did. This comes from Moapa Valley in Nevada. So let me open this. Oh my gosh, I can't open it. Okay. There's Shelly's and I will open mine. Oh, I love that sound. Was... And immediately we can see the difference in texture. So Shelly's is much more kind of honey-like. It's a little runnier. You can see how the pectin congeals the juice into jelly. Now pectin is derived from 
fruit and is a natural plant-based thickener. I think I probably cooked mine a little bit longer than Shelly did because look at mine. Mine's much more solid. I would see more jelly-like rather than honey-like. So let's do a little taste comparison, shall we? So I'm gonna take a little bit of Shelly's and put hers on this piece of toast. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Oh, that is nice. It's kind of reminiscent of honey because it has the honey color. It's sweet. And it has that really lovely distinctive flavor of the mesquite beans, which is kind of oatmealy and sweet and biscuity with a touch of cinnamon. It's such a unique flavor. It's lovely. It doesn't taste like honey in my opinion, although it does look like it. It's delicious. All right, let's compare that with mine. There's a little bit of acidity in there as well. So mine is much thicker and clearer in color. Here we go. Mmm, oh, very different. Mine is much tangier. There's more acidity to mine and the mesquite bean flavor is subtler. So if you make this, I would say use twice as many mesquite beans than I did. Rather than using 10 cups, use 20 cups because the flavor of Shelly's is much more pronounced than mine. You can still taste the mesquite beans definitely, but I like Shelly's version better. Mmm, so good. Really delicious, I love that. Now let's compare that to real honey. Here's a jar of my honey. I harvest this a couple weeks ago. Look at that. It's gold, I tell you, pure gold. So as you can see, the consistency is completely different. This is made from the nectar of flowers and the bees reduce it down until it is the consistency of honey. All right, here we go. Hmm. Very different than the mesquite bean jelly. The jelly has more of a gelatinous kind of texture to it, more cooling. Well, this is more syrupy and more intensely sweet. The flavor is completely different too. It tastes like blossoms and that delectable flavor of honey. Both mesquite bean jelly and honey are delectable on buttered toast. It's just a lovely, lovely combination. I could imagine using the mesquite bean jelly in my oatmeal as well. Instead of maple syrup or honey, I think it would be phenomenal. So the next time you're in the Southwest and you see these large trees with pods like these hanging down from them, go ahead and stop and give them a whiff. And you'll know what I'm talking about. And big thanks to Shelly for sending me the mesquite beans and for teaching me about mesquite bean jelly. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video. Subscribe. And I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.